Sports Century. Pat Tillman, tonight. Pat was a guy that appealed to the tough guy because Pat was a tough guy. He was the type that appealed to the intellectual because he was that. He was the type that appealed to the free spirit because he was definitely that. He loved contact. His abandoned, passionate style, the gladiator type guy. That was Pat. My great grandfather was at Pearl Harbor, and a lot of my family has gone and fought in wars, and, and I really haven't done a damn thing. He's supposed to get out of the army, he's supposed to then go into politics and become the president of the United States, or he's supposed to start his own company and become a CEO. The story's supposed to have an outstanding ending. had one speed and that was intense it was full bore it was gonzo pat could not fit in a box you couldn't find a box big enough to fit him in pat was dynamic he was multifaceted he was a person that uh, pursued things in every avenue you could think of he was a scholar he was competitive he had a fiery spirit he wasn't really worried about what people thought about him when we were doing contracts, I met him in Los Gatos in a restaurant. It was a Sunday afternoon. Here comes Pat, flip-flops, shorts, T-shirt. And I said, Patty, we can't go in there. And he goes, hey, don't worry about it. There was no gray with Pat Tillman. It's either here or here. One day, he grew his hair long. The next day, he got tired of it and shaved it. Pat was a guy that wore his emotions and also wore his beliefs and his convictions. He was right out front with everything. You never had to question where Pat Tillman stood on any issue because he would let you know. And he also questioned where you stood. He had a, a remarkable ability to always question authority, and yet he would never be a guy that would damage any sense of authority. He was one of the two or three guys you made sure you stopped at his locker because you were going to get the honest truth. One year, they got hammered in Jacksonville, and we went up to him after the game, and he said, you know, we're just complaining about the pain right now. You know, it's like, show me the baby. Quit complaining about the pain. Pat had a healthy disregard for his physical health, and that allowed him to do things that some of us would go, well, I'm not so sure I want to do this. We were in Arizona, jumping off these cliffs that were 40, 50 feet high. We were at a friend's wedding at this eight-story hotel, and he's, he's out climbing in the rain up the face of the hotel. <laughs> and who does that? <laughs> there was one time we were at a friend's pool party, and we're all down playing in the pool, and we look up, and Pat's on the second story of the house, and he does a backflip off of the house into the swimming pool. We went out, and I was doing like 70 miles or something down in Scottsdale, and Pat is just all fired up. He decides that you know he's gonna crawl out the window as I'm driving. He goes up on top of the hood, and he's up on top of the cab. He's up there banging on it, yeah, yeah. Next thing you know, his face comes over the windshield. Passion is kind of an important word for me, whether it's you know playing sports or whether it's you know just living or whatever you're gonna do. You should, in my opinion, you should be passionate about it, or else why do it? One place where Pat Tillman's passion burned brightest was on the gridiron. He had a lot of talent, but you didn't see it necessarily uh, out on the practice field. But when the game time came, like any good player, they have game speed. They have the ability to go make plays and play with a lot of passion, a lot of fire that you know, the fans loved him. He loved contact. His abandoned, passionate style, the gladiator-type guy, that was Pat. He was the most ferocious hitter I've seen, specifically pound for pound. He was a 10. He would bring his entire body on each and every play. You knew what speed Pat Tillman was going at, and you better get up to that speed, or sometime during that practice, he was going to embarrass you. Whether well, it was a receiver that didn't like the fact that you know it was seven on seven, and, he, and he's going to come up and give you a little pop. Uh, not all the time, but if he was feeling like 
hit me a little bit, he'd come up and do it. NFL coaches, they're deathly afraid of injuries, and they always want to go half speed and take it easy, and I mean, he had a hard time with that. Pat was intense on the football field, but that was not what made him successful. He was so intelligent. He knew where to position himself to make the tackles. He uh, knew where to get himself in the position to make interceptions. He was an incredibly bright guy who would memorize the playbook, who would understand not only his position, but everybody else's position on the field. One day we were in a nine on seven drill where the offense has their people and they run the football against our defense. And uh, the offense would come up and Pat would look at the backfield set and the offensive lineman. He'd say, guys, it's ISO. Sure enough, it was ISO. We were beating a team soundly, 50 to nothing at half. Before the second half started, I said to Pat that hey, he won't be playing any offense or defense this half. And uh, as I was preparing for the kickoff that we were receiving, my coach upstairs said, I thought you took Pat out of the game. And I said, well, I did. He says, well, he's back there receiving the second half kickoff, which he proceeded to run it back about 85 yards for a touchdown. And as he was coming off the field, he came directly to me. And before I could say anything, he said, Coach, you said nothing about special teams. Beneath a brimming confidence was an intense curiosity that, like his risk-taking, seemed to have no limit. If he can't beat you up physically, he's going to try to do it mentally. So he would sit there and, and argue about what color the sky was. He was passionate about things. He was fired up. Some people are scared to talk about religion, race, sexual orientation. Pat wasn't like that. Pat looked you in the eye and would talk about anything. I used to get mad at him um, on Saturday nights before games because he wouldn't shut up. He would sit on the edge of his bed, facing my bed, staring at me with his elbows on his knees. Talk to me. Come on, talk to me. And I would just roll over and say, Pat, I'm, I got to go to sleep. We got a game tomorrow. When he was a junior, uh, Bruce Schneider threw a magazine on my desk and said, what is Pat doing? From my office, you could see the light standards in Sun Devil Stadium. So he said, he's sitting up on that light fixture up there. So I brought Pat in and I said, uh, Pat, where's this picture taken? He said, well, oh, right up there, coach. And I said, well, why are you up there? And he said, well, I go up there every Thursday and kind of meditate for an hour. He was a voracious reader. He would read anything from Princess Bride to the most involved political and historical books around. And not only would he read them, he'd dog ear pages and have debates and conversations with his friends and with his brothers about them. The thing about Pat that's really interesting to me is that it, long before 9-11 happened, Pat really was consumed by this sense of restlessness, that he was always searching for something in life, that he was always on the go, trying to obtain something that was out there. 